Binary Jazz, the show where I talk about D&D, a game that my two co-hosts have never played, and they pretend that they're interested. It's true. <laughs> also true. <laughs> I'm here, as always, with Binary Gary uh, on the internet, Gary in real life, or is it? Uh, and Allison Plus on the internet, uh, internet celebrity Allison Plus, uh, who is Allison Tarr sometimes in, in real life. <sighs> made it through another week what's what's uh what's the what i noticed yesterday there's a conversation about twitter lists am i in on any am i freaking Probably. Probably. On a bunch I'm, of... sure, I'm sure you're on some i'm on a silly amount actually yeah why do you have a word camp eu list <laughs> <laughs> That's always good when you're on lists that you don't even like, that aren't really applicable. You're like, you're wrong. I didn't go there. Uh, People to watch. We appear to be on episode butthole. It's uh, (laughs) 1110111. I thought you meant that we were on a list called episode butthole. No. Well, I think now we should. Uh, <laughs> we need to make that list. Don't create we? a list called "Episode Butthole." I thought you meant like the Binary Jazz Twitter account was on someone's list. Called I have not I looked like... at the list that the Binary Jazz Twitter account is on. If that, uh, I don't know that I want to be on that list, or maybe yeah, I do. I'm very <laughs> ambivalent on this. Can I? I guess what be the? Wouldn't be the worst list I've been on. Twitter. I, I'm Binary not even going to share the names of the lists that I had to block from my. <laughs> yeah. Hot WordPress chicks. <laughs> Are you on that list? No. I mean, I oh. don't know. I'm not. Okay. If I do Sadly, that, I'm not either. I um, was on some offensive lists that I blocked <sighs> yesterday. And I was like, nope, not on, don't look at my tweets don't, ever again. I don't think I realized that lists were actually like a thing that people used in Twitter because I certainly don't use them. Um, I use them. So, like, glancing at it, I uh, I don't know that I have a lot of housekeeping, but, like, I also feel like I probably should know. Maybe I block notifications when I get added to a list or something. I don't know. No, My name not, guys like, is not on any lists. Uh-huh. Anyone. Maybe I should add us to a list. <laughs> um, but, like, I have lists, but they're private. So, like, we could, you know, like, it doesn't account for those lists. Hmm. But like my lists are really boring. They're just private because they're, I don't know. There's no reason. No, I get it. They're on them. Yeah, there's no, there's no public value. I get it. Get it's it. like WordPress people that like maybe are important, but like I don't actually need to follow. I don't know. <laughs> it's more of an obligation in my mind that I feel like. Oh, so you can put people on the list and you can go view that list, but you don't actually have to follow them. You can just curate. Yeah, you can just watch that yeah. list. Oh, yeah. that's 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 an interesting use case that I'll never apply that would make my life better. Because sometimes I'm like, oh, they they do post occasionally like interesting things, but I'm like, if they're not like a well-rounded person on Twitter, I don't want to follow follow them. Yeah. Well, apparently that's going to be kind of a feature that's coming to Twitter is is sort of like the groups. Yeah. Um, which will be like Facebook groups, which is like a bunch of people that you don't necessarily follow, but you can follow the group, presumably, and then get all the stuff that people in the group are tweeting. We should form our own group. We'll just get ahead of this. <laughs> well, we already did. It's called Binary Jazz, and it's at twitter.com slash binary jazz. Also dot us. Not twitter.com slash binary jazz dot us, just binary jazz dot us. And maybe, maybe I was actually Sorry for the confusion. I was thinking about this. Uh, I was thinking about this uh, yesterday. Uh, maybe we could be we could have binary jazz dot github dot io and use my fancy little profile y thing. I love that idea. And then can you make Let's... like three profiles <laughs> just like all about us? Yeah. 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 No, I, I think that's lovely. Um, I spent way too much time on that yesterday. <laughs> just yeah. styling it. Looks, but it looks amazing. If uh, you're wondering what we're talking about, uh, I wrote yes. a thing Thank in you. React recently. Uh, well, I wrote a couple things because I took a week uh, to, to just dig into to React stuff. So... Uh, I updated my uh, battle 
D and D battle tracker thing, which is now has an actual website and you can play with it. If you really want see, this is where I talk about D and D uh, and nobody cares. Uh, it's called, uh, it's at battle tracker dot jazz sequence.com go and play with it. And the code is on GitHub, yada, yada, yada. That's also on the internet. That's also on the internet. Uh, the other thing that I built, I built uh, later uh, as a sort of one-off thing. Cause I was thinking about um, there's a service called Linktree. Uh, that I see a lot of links from that people put in their profiles and their pinned tweets and all that sort of crap. Uh, and I was thinking, I actually like had the thought because I have lots of social profiles and links and stuff to put in a tree. I was thinking, well, I could, maybe I should do something like that. And then I was like, well, but dude, I'm a web, I'm a web designer. I can build that thing myself. Uh, so I did. Uh, and I built a thing uh, where you can just put all of your uh, links in a little JavaScript file uh, that just has like the name and the address and cool icon stuff. Uh, and then uh, it automatically has a script that'll publish it up to your GitHub uh, uh, profile if you don't have one or if you do, then it will make it your thing. Um, so it'll, it'll make your like your username.github.io if you follow the instructions. Um, so I, I did that, and then Allison made hers. And then maybe, we'll have a, maybe we'll have a binary jazz thing. I uh, I have to uh, give a shout out to uh, probably not a listener, uh, Sarah, who is uh, has a code thesaurus repo that I'm honestly as excited about as anything I've seen on the internet in a long time. The idea that you could pick a programming language and then see how that concept works in another language is uh, how I want to spend my weekends. <laughs> is it though? I guess, I guess maybe, maybe for Gary it is. I, like it's, I, it was, it was such a rabbit hole when I fell into it. I mean, I, I was like, oh, this is fun. I should look at this for five minutes. And then two hours later, I'm like, and, and, and to be clear, like right now, like it's, it's very much a work in progress. So the languages are limited. I think there's four languages right now. And I still spent two hours hopping back and forth, like comparing and thinking about syntax and wondering why, and then looking at other pull requests and thinking about like, uh, it's, 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 the pull requests are not actual executable code, but even so it's still very meta mm. uh, programming and thinking about like, how would you present this in a bite size? It's, I'm going to lose some time in it. Uh, and I'm pretty happy about it, honestly. Yeah, I have. I've actually, I, uh, I adopted three issues and open pull requests on all three. And I think that this weekend I might adopt issues in a language I don't know to force myself to learn how to write syntax in that language. Uh, because cause that sounds like a lot of fun, doesn't it, everyone? <laughs> I just liked that I was like, oh, I know, I know that person. Like, oh, I know Sarah. <laughs> Allison knows a lot of the cool people on the internet, it turns out. <laughs> no, I so. only know, like, I basically, of the two people named, I know two of them. <laughs> I know no one else. I, I mean, for what it's worth, though, I would, I would retire with that batting average. Like, yeah, I know all the cool people that are on the internet this week. For, for Herman, I know. <laughs> <That people. week. laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that week it was 100% of the cool people on the internet. So <laughs> that's pretty damn rad. Uh, Allison, this, I think we're not, we're not spoiling the announcement because by the time this comes out, we'll be, uh, next week, but you have a thing today, right? Oh, you're going on, you're <laughs> going to be is. on the internet. I will be on the internet in the past in, by the time. The this so by the time you're listening or watching this, uh, this will be a week old, but, uh, Was Allison, there an announcement that I missed on this? Uh, no, I am. It's only on I'm Alice's doing... Twitter and her Instagram and her. Yeah, if you don't follow me on social media, Gary, do you? <laughs> I've just, I've been doing bad with social media lately because. <laughs> You've been too busy with Code Thesaurus. Because <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> my computer, I'm like, what I want to do? I want to look at languages I don't know. Hold on. Let me, let me catch up. Just kill time for a minute. Let me catch up to see. Well, I can happening. just tell you. <laughs> yeah, we could just, yeah. And that's probably fine. Oh, um, here it is. On my YouTube channel. Or not on my YouTube. I'm on YouTube on someone else's channel doing an interview and talking about tarot and the right amount of woo. Um, so yeah, so that'll be live. Yeah, tonight, yeah. How did that? How did that? How did that? How did that come about? Amy is a friend I made through YouTube, and yeah. And she wanted to do know. a live thing, and you're like, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, she was just like, hey, let me interview on me interview you on my channel. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> well, no, because like I make videos, but like I record them and then edit them. And now I'm like, oh, now everyone will know how much I say um and and, and like that last one was me sticking out my tongue, dear listener. <laughs> But anyway, so that's my, like, I'm stretching my boundaries of yeah. this week. That's awesome. Sweet. The 2 p.m. And you can yeah. also watch the recorded version after it airs live. Do if we need to make... Watch um, real time and you can watch me on double... You can <laughs> speed me up so it's not so slow. Do we need to make um, a Twitter bot that's, like, um, launch library, but, like, allison.tv so people can subscribe in their Slack and know when you'll be on the air? No, not at all. No, I don't see. I don't actually think there's a Venn diagram of people that like care about binary jazz and care about tarot. I feel like there's like a slight like 1% overlap. I mean, our listeners. Let's let's back up a little. Yeah, let's let's back up a bit. Um, Our listenership is probably I mean, I would I would assume I haven't looked at stats because stats are (laughs) dumb. We should. Uh, (laughs) But and we're on a million platforms, so it would be impossible to get all the stats anyway, because we're on all the all the things now uh, and they all track individually. But I will place our listenership to approximately 10. So if one of those people (laughs) is in the middle of that Venn diagram is in the butthole, so to speak then that would be 10% of our listeners right there. 10% of the listeners in the butthole. Yeah, this is a very valid point. Um, and I, I mean, I, I think that statistic, statistic, oh, I can't say statistical, statistical significance arises at like what? 8%, right? Is a tipping point? So well, if I brought like two or three people on board to like listen to the podcast, it definitely means my my chances have gone up because most of the people mm-hmm. in my life are at least somewhat supportive of me rambling about tarot. <laughs> I'm supportive of, of you rambling about tarot. I, I try. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I need to, I need to do. Um, I am as supportive of you rambling about tarot as I am of Chris rambling about D and D. There you go. That's all I ask. I, I do honestly mean that. Like I, I do like hearing both of you, be excited about your things, even if I don't know them. I feel like a grandpa when I say that. You're like, I'm just like, glad to see you liking something. <laughs> I'm glad you're happy. Yeah, no, I am. I legitimately am. Like, it, like it, it does make me. It does make me feel happy, uh, even if I don't track all of it. What's the Gary equivalent? Like a space launch? <laughs> like, I'm <kind laughs> of apparently, coding, coding languages right I now. Gonna, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, space stuff. I, I mean, I had. Uh, well, so a week and a half ago, right? We had the Mars lander. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain I must have posted about that in our Slack. Did I? I don't know if I did. Yeah, there was lots okay. of exclamation points, and you were like, "I can't believe this." <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was I was slacking in a lot of places that day, and I had uh, two video feeds up, um, uh, and I was trying to get the audio mixed so I could get the audio from one in one headphone and one in the other, and I just opted for the NASA audio feed and then the technical feed over here. Um, and, uh, and honestly, it was just so thrilling. And then on Monday they had their press conference where they released like the, have you watched the video of the descent? So they pretty much like slapped a GoPro like seven GoPros on stuff. And so we have video of um, the parachute opening. And then we have video of the heat shield dropping off and then video of when the, like drone rocket powered drone goes and then the, and then the descent. And so the descent, we have video from both sides, like the drone looking down and the Rover looking up. And then uh, the one that blew my mind is like, Oh yeah. The video feed goes out on the drone when the drone flies away because the umbilical is no longer attached to the Rover. And that was feeding the video. I mean, it's just like, there's this, uh, uh, there's just, I mean, it's just this beauty, like, of, of this robot, like, just arriving on Mars and us being able to actually witness it, like, in a real meaningful way for the first time. Um, I'm getting choked up thinking about it now, so. 
I almost don't think <laughs> that I mentally like actually register what's happening. I feel like, cause I feel, I don't know. It still feels very abstract to me, I guess. Yeah. I, I have trouble like, so they landed, I want to say it was 15 meters from where they wanted to put down or maybe it might've been less than that. Maybe it was five meters and I converted it in my head to 15 feet and I've confused them. But after like 126 million mile flight, they're within, I mean, like, I mean, within, you know, dozens of- And I can't parallel long. park, so go figure. I, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I drove, I missed my driveway pulling in from the grocery store the other day. Like I hit the curb, like, and, uh, and, and to look at like, to follow on Twitter, uh, some of the folks at JPL that are doing this, like, um, we need to get you. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I maybe. But I, I, I think like I think about like science. Like when you think about scientists, right? Like it's it's the scientific method, and it's like you know there's this and that and the give and take, and it's very dry and boring, right? Uh, it, intentionally. They need like, Gary. The science. Well, no, the scientific method is was like is purposely built to keep keep emotions out of the decision making process, and and. And so we put science on Mars to do the study and stuff, but to see this team that have gone through this team of engineers, like to have that celebration, like on a successful landing. Um, I mean, it's, it's, you know, I mean, what a, what a cool, what a cool piece of your career, you know? And here I am writing sock box. So. <laughs> so, so to put that into a bit of, of perspective, I guess the, what you're saying is that everybody needs to have a, a touchdown moment, a, a Mars landing moment, a, a moment worth celebrating in their life as like a capstone of something. So if that was a thing, think of what is, what is one thing that would be that sort of like celebrating, like throwing your hands up and partying in the room with or without other humans, uh, <laughs> sure. What, what would that thing be? I'm trying to think of what mine would be. Well, can I first respond and say I don't think that that every job, career, or life needs that moment. Like, sure. I think that I think that some careers inherently with that you, moment is much had... more explosive because it's not built in. Like, yeah. if you're in sales, you know, like there's like yeah, I close to say like that's that's a hit. I, I mean, I, I'll call like it's an endorphin hit constantly, right? So, like the the counter on that is is something that's very long. Oh, you know, yeah. Like planning right. a mission to Mars or writing software. Or, um, I think my most recent one, honestly, would be. Um, huh, my, most, my most my most recent one, honestly, would be um, a pretty like significant database source? cut over. What's oh. that? I was gonna say code the source. <laughs> They it's just merged. Just <laughs> now. Um, no, it was a database cut over where we, where we, you know, like 150 sites with no downtime went from the local database instance to one in the cloud. Like that's, you know, that took a little bit of planning. And I mean, it wasn't like the biggest, you know, project of my career, but it was also super exciting to get it right and to have the plan in place and execute, you know, the spreadsheet. And um, so that was, that was a fist bump moment. Right. Um, I think mine would be either getting my permanent residency or my citizenship mm. for Canada. Not that, I mean, like technically, d like, did I do anything? I mean, I filled out a hell of a lot of forms. Um, <laughs> so I feel like that counts for something. <laughs> um, but I feel like that was a real like, woo moment yeah. of progressing down a different path. But, you know, you're going live in a couple hours, so maybe that'll be... That'll maybe be, that'll be my new moment. That'll be your new moment. Um, live on YouTube. Real-time Allison. Yeah, real-time Allison. RTA. I mean, you guys get to experience it every week, but for most people, it's just... <laughs> yeah. Real flash. Well, I mean, like... Real-time Allison isn't going to be that much different than binary jazz Allison. It's just because, like, we don't go in and, and edit out all the ums and... I know. <laughs> Do we not? I think I was told early on that this is a very heavily edited show. Yeah. 
Yeah, you were, you were lied to here. <laughs> that, like, I'm not even in the edited version. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's just gaps of silence. The edit is scary, like being distracted or mumbling or Weird. like missing the point. Disjointed. <laughs> um, I I think I can. Carry walking off camera. I think I can speak for other dungeon masters when I say that I think part of the attraction of being a dungeon master is having those moments where um, your game just comes together, your players click or whatever, or like they figure out the thing that you've been like hinting at for the last several months or, or whatever, when something at the come comes out and you have just a really good game session and it's like, yeah. And it's, and, and the thing is that um, unless, I mean, thank you. Thanks to the internet. Um, Dungeon Masters can kind of get together and, 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 and celebrate those wins with each other through Discord or Twitter or whatever. But, but traditionally, that's going to be a solitary, a solitary mm-hmm. moment, a little inward. Woo-hoo, um, yeah. because, because no one at your table is going to really be able to grasp all of the stuff that you bring to the game. Um, so, uh, and I definitely think that that's something that, that, that influences me. Like when I, like I live for the times when things just work out really well or, or do a thing that I didn't expect. Like, so here we go. Talk about D and D again. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert. Uh, last night, uh, in, in our family game, um, the, they ended up following, uh, a story thread uh, that I didn't actually anticipate them following t- in, in this way, um, where essentially there is um, there is a town that they are in, and they're trying to elect a new speaker because the old speaker got killed by a, a giant, and the, they've already taken care of the giants. Um, so there, there's these two people. One person is is sort of le- sort of widely respected and known. Her family's been in the town for for generations since its founding, and but she doesn't really want the the gig. Uh, and she tries to pawn it off on on the characters, and then the other person is secretly uh, being blackmailed by this like uh, uh, criminal underground network. Uh, and uh, this person had uh, killed somebody and sort of ran uh, from from there to escape authorities, and has been living in this town for a while. And the 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 criminal syndicate uh, has been blackmailing him. Uh, and, and making him do things for them. Otherwise they would release that information. Um, so they follow that thread to like follow by following him, like literally to another town, many, 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 many hours away. They get to overhear a conversation between him and the speaker of another town. Who's actually also a member of the crime syndicate. They actually witness them sort of organizing a group of thugs that are going to go back to the town and just stir stuff up. And he's going to come in and be like the savior of the town by like defeating all of them or whatever. And uh, they managed to get back and find uh, the people that came in and, and they like start an encounter or they follow them. And then they end up like beating up all the, all the, yeah, killing all of the bad guys um, before they could do the thing. So like they end up being the ones that, that save the town and he gets uh, um, caught and, and his secrets are revealed. Uh, and that was, uh, that was kind of cool. Like to have that whole, because th- that was like a little, a little story thread that was there and you could follow it, but mostly you could follow it in the context of like, this is a thing that's happening in this town in the background. Um, and these are like the motivations of all the different characters and stuff. Um, and they, they just went, went with it and, and followed that whole, that whole, Thing, and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I, uh, it made, made me think. It made, made made meant it, made it so that I had a thing to write about when I wrote the notes afterwards. I write notes to my game. I'm a really big nerd. It's fine. Uh, and the safe. other thing, yeah. Right. And the other thing uh, that I have in a similar note uh, that I have a recent win uh, in is uh, I've been um, playing with the idea of a zombie apocalypse uh, within. Dungeons and Dragons, a Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign. Um, and this came out of a Quora answer uh, about, uh, that, I, that came up in my daily digest. Uh, the question was like, what is, the, what is the thing that zombie apocalypse movies miss um, that like all zombie apocalypse movies always miss? And the answer was, well, this isn't really that they miss it. It's, it's an intentional thing. They always start in the middle. So you always miss the beginning always, because if you, if you started at the beginning of the zombie apocalypse, then it would be super, super boring 
like it'd be people in a lab developing a virus or whatever. You'd like see all like, but it's all like, like now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be all like, like, like now. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So, so you start in the middle when you've got like the dude with a shotgun shooting a zombie in the head, and you find out, oh, there's zombies, and here they are, and they can only be killed by shooting him in the head or whatever. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I was thinking like, well, but in a D and D game, in a, in a long running campaign, you could start at the beginning. You could like mm-hmm. start to tease these little things happening in different areas and sort of start to tie them together. And I thought that's a really interesting idea. Um, mm-hmm. so I started like going down that rabbit hole of like, what would that look like? Um, and who would motivate it? And I actually was able to put it in the, into the context of the other game that I'm running, um, by like combining, uh, one, like, a, th- a thing that I was playing with, an idea that I had where there is this, uh, there is this succubus that they encountered and she killed one of the party members. And I had it in my head that she was gonna raise him and make him be her minion sort of. Um, so like that combined, that whole thing combined with like her like studying like dark arts and like learning about all this undeath stuff and like deciding to just fuck shit up and like create this virus. Um, and just to- I have a larger question of how do you keep <laughs> back? <laughs> Of all these things, like you have notes, obviously, like copious I, amounts of things. I do have, I do have notes, but a lot of this stuff ends up like it starts out in my head, and I have these interconnected threads for for like things. I guess that that's it. It's because it starts out. off in your head. Yeah, it's easier the notes are so that I I can go back and maybe read something or like refer to it later, or or just to sort of solidify. So I spent, um, I don't know, like an hour or so this week just writing down all my thoughts about how this how this character who is just a little character in this one like pre-written camp uh, pre-written adventure uh, i'm going to make her into like a larger big bad and sort of the the architect of this this plague and then she's going to basically set it and forget it because she's got other interests elsewhere and like what are those things what is she actually after and who is she trying to get at and then i was able to tie in a whole other uh, uh adventure module uh into the mix uh of of like where her like lost daughter was trapped in this dungeon thing and like like so i can have like different things that that will be happening sort of concurrently um and none of this is stuff that i'm like planning for like the next session or anything either this is like it's <laughs> like a couple percentage of times where people like where your team doesn't pick up what you're putting down oh all the then... time okay. <laughs> like 99 like, percent <laughs> Because you're like, I have created an entire plot over here. Yep. They just yep. need to go into this cave. Yep. Yep. And then they're like, walk by the cave. Like, I mean, I mean, the secret, the secret that is not so much a secret, um, but the that I keep coming across in in all the things that I read about dungeon mastering is that um, that is a normal thing. Is that you're going to create all this all this plot and story and whatever, and they're just going to go right by that cave entrance. They're just not even yeah. going to care. It's <laughs> nothing. So the idea is that you just keep planting these seeds, and eventually, if you keep planting the seeds somewhere, <laughs> they'll pick up on one of them, and then they'll all go, roads oh, lead to that oh, damn cave. <laughs> yeah, there's a cave over there. Yeah. <laughs> I was reminded, Chris, you said something about notes and I had to pull up. I actually keep um, notes just for everything and arbitrarily. And I have a, I have a category for um, binary jazz and I never reference it on the show. Um, and I eventually just delete things from it. Uh, often we talk about it in Slack and it takes care of itself. You have or it eight. gets so outdated. I'm like, you have, so you have a notes of things to talk to us about. Um, not to talk to you about, but like topics that I want to bring up, like that, Oh. Uh, yeah, like that. I, I like. I would like. I would like Allison and Chris's opinion or <laughs> ideas on this. And so often, that's how some of that stuff makes it into. So it's not notes. Uh, it's not notes about things that we discuss on the show. It's notes about things. Oh no, God, no! Not even show. close. Okay. Not I was, was going to say, if you're holding out on notes about that. stuff, if you're holding out on stuff that uh, of notes that that of stuff that we were talking about, I'm going to like come down on you because I need those for show notes. <laughs> there is no, 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 not at all. But there, th- but this you reminded me. Number one, that I should actually look at my notes. Are we really only? We have ten minutes. Left. Episode really butthole is, during... is the it's title of the episode. Today. It's okay. in the can. It's in the butt. Um, so I have um, notes that I um, uh, I never bring up, but I have. Did I miss a spit take? Did you spit while I was looking over that way? <laughs> um, so th- it was simple. It's very simple. This one, we had a conversation last week about everybody being named Raven, um, and I changed my name to uh, Gary Raven Tobject on uh, Twitter, which was important. 
But secondly, this spawned a conversation um, about the gender binary. And Chris shared a tweet uh, that was very helpful for me. And I would like that to be in the show notes this week. That's it. That's the, that's the note. Cool. Uh, yeah. Can be done. I, I found it extremely helpful in, uh, in my definition of what non-binary means and fixing my definition. So that was, um, so that, that was like a it, note card or something now. That was a, a video that uh, was done by a person that I follow on Twitter, Critical Bard, who is a non-binary uh, TTRPG, tabletop uh, RPG creator and person. Glad you um, find that. And, uh, and they just, I, it popped up in like as a, this, this person went live on Twitter and here's the link. And I, I wanted to go back to it to, to watch it because I, I expected it to be pretty good. I think I've seen them speak on various things. I think they spoke over the summer on like the D and D they, they had some sort of uh, virtual event over the summer and there's like a, uh, like a black creators um, uh, round table. And I think they were on that. Um, and they've been outspoken in a lot of other ways and, and stuff. So um, I, I generally expect good things from them. So yeah, that was, that was pretty, was that critical part? I think that was critical part or maybe that was Orion. No, that was a riot. <laughs> I'm totally wrong, but they're both. Just check the show notes. They're both. They're both black, non-binary, RPG people. I'm but really glad that you. I think that was a riot. Expanded on your TTRPG um, acronym because I was a little lost there temporarily. Tabletop. I knew the RPG part, but. Yeah, yeah because you say RPG, but that could mean you know. A video game. So TT well, is tabletop. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I heard RPG. But conceptually, like I thought, I don't know, maybe TT is like a universe that I'm not aware of. Yeah, two Of which there are many. Hey, um, I also <laughs> the other note that I should refer to, um, because it's a recurring thing. Uh I wanted to ask, when was the last time that you declared that the internet is garbage? Ooh. So I, I frequent like I feel like I do it every episode. I feel I like you do it every nice. week. Um, well, if I if I forget, it's not on purpose. I should I could do it every week. I should. Do when it was the last time I felt declared like the internet as garbage? Declared the internet as garbage. Mine was uh, yesterday. Yeah, uh, it's still early here this morning. When I saw the tweet about how to remove the battery pack from the dog that the New York Police Department has purchased from um, Boston Dynamics. Yep, that's when I was like, oh, this is way too similar to all the horror movies I watched when I was younger about future dystopias. This sucks. The internet is garbage. Uh, Actually, that's more reality is garbage. is garbage as opposed to the internet is garbage. If they... The internet's just telling you about it. Yeah. Um... How, <laughs> oh, I do... How much happier would I be without the internet? So, uh, earlier this week, um, a WordPress person that I know and respect, uh, Mika had posted a, wrote a blog, oh, yeah. blog post yeah. about her, uh, harassment experience that has been, uh, going on for the last two years, um, yeah. uh, for being the, really being the sort of main plugin review team person, uh, such that um, like just ongoing uh, as a result of like this developer being an asshole and getting their, their plugin and themselves banned from the plugin repository and then just continuing to harass uh, her for, uh, for two years. That was the last time that I said the internet was garbage. So that was earlier this week. Yeah, yeah. that's true. I got to go to WordCamp Miami a few years back and uh, I don't know what talk it was. Um, Mika did a talk, it was good. But then yeah. later on there was another talk about something else very technical and um uh like you know at the end of a talk when people like start like instead of asking questions like pontificating <laughs> um like there's a reason that she's um so effective uh in plugin reviews and that is because uh she can um i feel like she can immediately identify like uh purposeful conversation and bullshit conversation and so she was like the voice of reason and shut down this like pontificating uh, a couple of individuals and got it back on track uh, because the room monitor was not, uh, I don't know, whatever, able to. Uh, yes. And it's such a skill that seems 
just I know. lost. <laughs> there's, there's a confidence that it takes to do that. And I, I don't, I don't have it. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I, She's you know? a lovely human and doesn't, who doesn't deserve yes. this shit. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. She came out, uh, I had invited her to come out to uh, work camp Salt Lake City. I was actually trying to figure out the year, um, which I believe uh, ended up being Word Camp Salt Lake City 2015, I think, um, which was actually uh, possibly, possibly the first year that I actually sent out invites to people to come out. It was like, hey, this is an idea. I, I don't know how it's going to go. I'll just sort of shot in the dark. Let's invite mm-hmm. some people to, to speak at WordCamp. And then people said yes. And it was like, cool, I can do this more. And then I was doing it every, every year since. Um, <laughs> And, and got some really awesome people like Allison, Allison Tarr spoke at, at a WordCamp Salt Lake City. I exist. Yeah. In real life. Um, we don't have really- You exist questions. in real life and I exist in real life, but we can't confirm that. <laughs> Only Chris I, can. I can, yeah. I, I'm the- He's I'm like the, the, um, the Bitcoin key that we're both stored on. Mm, Is it? That's Is way it? better. That's way better. <laughs> than like the yeah, hub was, or some other you're right gary it was, it was orion um okay so we don't have any questions but we do have i should we should pin that list of questions that gary brought a while oh ago. i think i might have <sighs> well okay is it we could do that what's that. the weirdest food you've ever eaten Weird. Scorpion soup. Oh, weird, weird seems like a a trick. Yeah, I agree. It's a little, it's a little, it's a, it's poorly phrased. What, um, what food have you eaten that other people would find the most weird? An odd food that I love that um, is more of a weird combo, maybe, is peanut butter and pickle sandwiches. Wait, that's for real? Very <laughs> accessible, but weird food, I think. I saw that as I was uh, scrolling t- through Twitter, apparently 40 minutes ago. Um, and, uh, and I thought that was a joke, but that's really, you, that's really like a, a sandwich you like peanut butter and pickles. I, yes, you can. That's delicious. I started eating them in high school. I don't remember why. Um, Probably maybe some, I saw someone else have one and I wanted to try it. And then I was like, oh, this is actually really good. It's something about the crunchiness and the saltiness with the peanut butter. Go figure. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll try it. I don't know that I eat a lot of weird food. Um, I guess, I mean, I had, I think I had some alligator at some point, but I don't feel like that's that weird. Um, and I, I agree. Don't know, I don't like, think alligator is very weird at all. Yeah. I mean, you live in, you lived in Florida. You, you used to eat um, a lot of alligator. <laughs> I don't like, I, and I tend to avoid weird foods too. Like I've eaten, I've, I've eaten some weird fruits, but like any kind of fruit that you can eat isn't really that weird by definition. So no, uh, uh, what is it called? And I refuse um, to eat insects. Durian. Yeah, no, I've had durian. I've had durian. Uh, um, I've had other. I have to get the name of this. When I was in uh, when I was in uh, Sri Lanka, I don't remember. Awara uh, is like about that big, and it is. I had to look at the name. I'm just gonna remember what it is. It's like this stringy orange colored thing. It's it's oily. It doesn't have a lot of flavor. It's actually like if you were to like eat the outside of a, an orange, I think is what it is. And I bought it from a street vendor when I was in South America, uh, like a whole bundle of them. And then my teeth and my lips were orange for days. And I had like, I couldn't get the stringy stuff out. And, um, and everyone like was like, of, th- <laughs> he had a yeah, bet. look at the tourists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Three out of 10, three out of 10. <laughs> um, Not a good fruit. Yeah. I don't know that I, that I have a lot of, that I would say that I eat a lot of weird fruit food I, I would say most of the food that i eat is pretty normal um less than a minute do we have another uh another thing um what's the last song you listen to last song i listened to oh uh Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Binary Jazz.